a few months back I put together a really nice welding cart kit that was made by my friend Paul Brenniger and uh, he's better known on in the welding community as ZT Fab, Zero Tolerance Fabrication. Well my, my friend JD Brewer ordered, ordered one of these carts from him recently uh, with all the accessories, bottom drawer, slides and, and kit, foot pedal holder, all kinds of cable management and so I thought I would film that, the build of that at JD's shop and that's what we're doing today. Uh, we're JD's shop putting together one of these kits. Now you could weld this thing with uh, TIG with filler metal, TIG without filler metal for the most part. It's outside corner joints, a lot of outside corner joints on about uh, sheet metal that's roughly between 90 and 100 thousandths thick. That's roughly 2.4 millimeters thick. And uh, it goes together so, so nice and the fits are so nice that, that uh, we just zip most of it up without filler metal. So we're going to talk about using straight welding current versus pulse for doing that. And we're also going to talk about burst tacking using the torch switch for, for getting really quick fit ups on things like this. And then also we're doing a little TIG pulse with silicon bronze, something I've never really tried before and I don't know why because it's pretty awesome. All right, well, let's get into it. Let's take a quick look at the parts here and a little, little look at the quality of the hardware. Nice finish, dimple die punched for rigidity. And good McMaster car casters and wheels. And that's why that when you get finished with this thing, you can push it around so easily. All right, even though it's got nice clean cut edges on it, it was cut with plasma and we're going to pretty much do TIG today. So I'm going to do a quick clean on all the cut edges everywhere it's going to be welded just using a flap disc. I'm going to set the machine at about 150. That's pretty hot for material that's only about 95 thousandths, but that's because we're doing this little technique called burst tacking. Just using the torch switch. So when you press the little trigger on, this, on the torch, you got 150 amps. And like I said, this is about 95 thousandths thick material, roughly 2.4 millimeter. You got to get on and off that switch pretty quick, but it is such a, such a fast way to put something like this together. No dragging a foot pedal around or anything like that, just really quick. And we just need really small tacks. Now this is not a good method to use on any and every material, but this is mild steel and it's a cart. So it's not a problem. You can get some small crater cracks and things like that in certain materials. For instance, I would not use this method necessarily on Inconel. And the reason is you'd probably get little small crater cracks. So we're leveling up the uprights here that are made out of tubing, bent tubing, and doing the same thing here because there's almost no gap anywhere. And so we're able to use this quick tack method with no filler metal on virtually every mating surface. That's a good fit right there. We're just gonna tack that very corner there and blast that into there and you can hold the part with one hand, hold the TIG torch with the other, press the trigger, and boom, you got a tack. This is the Burr King that JD bought at uh, Fabtech, the last Fabtech, and he made this stand using the plasma cam. Holds all of his belts with the little finger dealies there. And it's a nice, it's a nice little setup. Super nice, super nice sander. Now this thing is going together every bit as good as the last one I put together. Just like a little puzzle. It's surprising how well it fits up. Nice little outside corner joints everywhere you look. You don't have to do any massaging or beating or anything like that. And they were able to get really quick tacks on these little outside corners. Just a little quick burst tacks. You got to get on and off that trigger pretty quick. If you're going to try this, by the way, if you've never tried it before, get some scrap first and get used to it because you can blow a hole in something pretty easy at 150 amps on, you know, 90 or 95 thousandths thick material. Like again, I usually set it at one and a half to two times what I would weld at, that any particular thickness, so quite hot. But you're getting off of it really quick. All right, well, quick, a quick uh, measurement of the machine so we can get the spread right, and then using a ratchet strap to hold everything together, getting the last few tacks on this thing, and then the basic cart will be pretty much all tacked up and rigid and ready to weld out. JD ordered some accessories like a, a drawer for the bottom, as well as a pedal holder, some you know cable hooks, things like that. I thought I would just take a little stab. It's been a while since I walked the cup or anything like this, and it turns out it wasn't was not the best way. 
You know, this didn't, what problem is on something this thin right away, because you're going kind of slow, you start to melt through and then you pull oxidation into the puddle and then it starts getting a little bit squirrely. Like you can see right here, it's not really, not really going where I want it to go, but it's fun and it's okay. And it looks pretty decent. But I think a better method is just uh, probably would be to drop down at least to a 1 16th wire. I believe 332 is, is all we had in the shop that day. So I'm just, that's, that's the reason for the lay wire. It's a little bit big to dip in and out. But this is a little bit better because I can move on just a little quicker. And not do a whole lot of side to side motion. Still would have been, went better with a smaller rod. All right, started off using straight current, no pulse. And while that works just fine, we decided to switch the pulse on to get a better look. So we're going to switch to pulse mode now, and that just winds up, you know, basically a couple of buttons. And basically, I'm set up for one pulse a second, about 30% on the background, and about 30% on the on pulse time, or pulse on time, I should say. And it takes more amperage when you're pulsing. Like, you know, the average readout on the machine for running this speed right here is about 69 amps. I had to set it up to 124 amps to get that because it's pulsing in between a low current and a high current. So this is JD's first ever time using Pulse TIG and he's doing pretty good. You can still see a little spark or two coming out of that puddle here and there and that's because he's pulling a little oxide from the backside. We'll get that dialed in in a minute. Good thing about doing something like this too is you can use both hands if you want to. A friend of JD's, uh, Zach, was in the shop today. This is his first time using Pulse TIG. And it's just easy because what you do is it pulses the high pulse and then you move up to the front edge of the puddle and it hits again and it just puts the ripples in it for you. And it's just kind of like dead easy. Again, you can, without filler metal here, you can just kind of prop with both hands if you need to. Or you can put a TIG finger on your pinky and just kind of slide it along like this, like this jabroni welding here. <laughs> I believe that's me there. But I'm just sliding along nice and easy. And what I'm trying to do, again, to repeat, I'm just uh, going to pause right at the front of that puddle. I move up to the front of the puddle and pause and let the high pulse hit. And it gives you a nice even set of ripples. This is the bracket for the cylinders, twin cylinders, little magnified shot there. About time to weld up these little axle, these round stock that goes through there. Got them all spaced with the washers and the cotter pins. Not much to see there. So that's the basic cart, but JD ordered a lot of accessories for this cart, you know, a, a foot pedal holder, a, a drawer for the bottom to put tools in. So we're going to watch JD put together the, uh, the, the uh, drawer assembly here, sort of in uh, Jimmy DiResta style, fast motion. Right, for this whole project, we never hooked up a foot pedal. Um, strictly use a torch switch. And JD is using the torch again for those, those hot, fast fusion tacks. But he's going to switch over in a minute here to the same pulse settings and uh, using silicon bronze for this drawer. Just like the cart, you know, the strength is basically due to the design and doesn't need to be completely welded out. So JD is just going to kind of stitch weld it here and there with uh, two or three inches of silicon bronze filler metal. And here's a little shot of that using the same pulse settings with a little less amperage. Like I think the amperage was set to around 90 on this, the peak amperage. The metal does have to be nice and clean for it to flow ni nice like this. That's the reason for using a flap disc and cleaning any plasma cut edges and getting that oxidation off of there or any other kind of mill scale or coating that might be on carbon steel before you lay the silicon bronze to it. Just about ready to tack weld the drawer on the cart. Little fitment here, and then still using the torch switch, still using silicon bronze, I'm just laying that silicon bronze right in there and walking over it is the order of the day. These are cable hanger hooks here. 
And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how JD's got this whole thing set up, even with a Milwaukee uh, accessory case. You've got a Lincoln Tomahawk plasma cutter underneath, one of those that has the built-in compressor. So for thin sheet metal and stuff like that, he'll be able to cut and weld same cart. It really helps to have clean metal, so you want to hit it with a flap disc. Those edges that were plasma cut, hit those with a flap disc. A gas lens really helps. The better your gas coverage, the better that silicon bronze is going to flow in there. Neither, neither JD or myself have used pulse TIG with silicon bronze and just laying, laying the wire in the puddle like this before. And um, I got to tell you, I'm a pretty big fan for it, uh, of it for stuff like this. It takes a little less heat than it does to weld. You see that's his output, his total output there. Average of the pulsing is 60 amps. And that's just about going to do it for this thing. A little primer coat, followed by a little of uh, this stuff, this Rust-Oleum metallic silver stuff here that seems to cover super well. This is just a shop table here just to show you it's black and just it, it, surprising how well it covers. That's a, a, a foot pedal holder bracket there that you see right there. And that, that's handy to have. And that's the setup. Uh, Lincoln Tomahawk Plasma Cutter underneath, little uh, TIG accessory kit from Milwaukee. Uh, the drawer here where you keep an extra foot pedal. The first time I, I saw this at JD's shop, I had to go ahead and order one myself. It's a Milwaukee accessory kit and it just lets you carry your TIG stuff around like this and it won't, inter, it won't intermingle when you have the lid shut. It's got like a gasket around it and when it's shut, it's shut and nothing can mix. It's pretty awesome. Now, JD has been experimenting with his, the plasma cam as well as uh, some epoxy, different colored epoxy. So he's going to mix up some uh, glow-in-the-dark epoxy here and fill that logo in. It's got a, like a backing strip piece of tape on the back side of it to hold it, but it dries really quickly. The whole operation is pretty quick. Going to mix it up there, use a syringe, and, well, you'll see the rest. That's pretty slick, isn't it? And when that dries and it gets a little light on it, it'll, it'll glow in the dark. Time to go home, shut out the lights, and there's the, there are the logos glowing. Well, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you'll drop by alacart.com and, and uh, check out Paul's premium welding carts.